The Great Step, millenniums of events, hundreds of nomadic tribes and people. They lived, worked, made discoveries, conquered large tracts of lands, and left us some mysteries. To learn more about it, watch the project called Enigma of the Great Step. This is one of the oldest streets in Almaty. Many use its old name, Vinogradov, although it has long been renamed in honor of one of the first Kazakh folk heroes, Karasai Batir from the Shaprashti family. This street is a part of the streets named after three Batirs because it is located between streets Bogun by Batir and Kaban by Batir. But logically, one of the streets was supposed to get the name of another warrior. Argintai, because he was Karasai's best friend. They became part of history as the leaders of the 600 unit, which confronted the enemy armada. People called them the Kazakh Spartans, and the place where they fought was called Kazakh Thermopylae. In the spring of 1643, the young Sultan Zhangir, the second son of Khan Yasim, received disturbing news from his ally, Kun Dulian Taisha, Yerdini Batur, a Khronos Oirat prince who previously united all the Oirat tribes, was going to arrange campaign to the western lands. Despite the fact that Kun Dulian himself was Oirat, he decided to warn Zhangir of danger because he was at enmity with Erdini Batur, and he did not accept Erdini's claim to be the prince. The Kazakhs did not have their own written chronicles. We cannot look through the veil of the centuries and authentically state what was happening in the Kazakh Khanat at those times. It is known that after the death of Yasim Khan, his eldest son, Shanibek, took the place on the throne. But Janibek soon died and the exact date of his death is not known. Some sources state that Janibek died in 1648. Others believe that he died in 1643. It is the year of Erdini Batur's new campaign to the Kazakh lands. If we consider the second version, it is easy to assume that the next candidate for the throne, Sultan Jangir, was in an extremely difficult situation. By the middle of the 17th century, a very complicated political situation developed on the territory of the Kazakh steppe. The death of Yasim Khan led to the lack of centralized authority. There were a lot of candidates to become Khan. A lot of Genghis Khan's descendants wanted to be on the white Khoshma, to sit on the throne, and thus very few people supported Jangir Sultan. He was not the only son of Yasim Khan. He was not the eldest son of Yasim Khan. Nevertheless, it was Jangir who led the people to oppose the huge army of Erdini Batur. Unfortunately, there are no reliable sources about how Jangir was imprisoned. However, our domestic historians suggest that this happened in 1635, during Batur's first campaign to the west. At that time, the Kazakh militia headed by Khan Janibek and Sultan Jangir was defeated. The young Sultan became hostage. Later, he was released during the negotiations. Realizing that he had no support within the country, Jangir made an unexpected move. He decided to confront the enemy with only 600 soldiers who were under his rule. It was his detachment. Famous soldiers, including two friends, Karasai from Shaprashti and Argintai from the Argin family, fought side by side with Jangir. As a result, his personal detachment, his personal nukers, guards, confronted the enemy army. All of them were prepared people who had combat experience. They had already faced with the Oirats previously, and they knew how to behave with them. They knew how these Jungarian tribes operated during the war. Uh, 
Shangir Khan decided to form an unexpected alliance with Jalantos Bahandur to stop this plan of detention, to stop that moving mass from the east. Jalantos Bahadur is a native of the Kazakh steppes, and perhaps ethnically he is Kazakh. So why was this alliance so unexpected, both for Jangir's rivals in the Khan's title fight and for the Oirats themselves? What prevented two ethnically close people to unite the forces against the common enemy? Despite the fact that Jalantos Bahadur was a descendant of the Kazakh family of the junior Juz, Alshin, he, like his father, devoted his life to the service to Bukhara Emirs, Ashtarkhanid dynasty. Ashtarkhanids competed with the Kazakh Khans for dominance in Central Asia, and consequently, there were conflicts between these two states. Jalantos Bahadur had a strong influence at the court of the Uzbek rulers, and even got the title of the Viceroy in Samarkand. He made a number of successful campaigns on the southern territories of the Kazakh Khanate, conquered Tashkent, which was under the Kazakhs' possession, and Turkestan, the capital of the state. Indeed, he was one of the main enemies of Yisim Khan. However, the Jungar expansion was a common threat, and after the Kazakhs, the Ashtar Khanids could fall victim to the swords of the eastern invaders. An understanding of this fact influenced the final decision of Jalan Tos to support the son of Yisim Khan. However, he had already supported his relatives during the first Jungar campaigns. What was the condition of the state at that moment? Who did influence on the reconciliation of the old enemies? In general, there are four Mongolian clans that are located in the western part of Mongolia. Khoshut, Torgut, Khoros, Dorbet. Chinese call them Ilyuta. They are the Mongols. They lived on the left part of Mongolia. It is the western part of Mongolia. In Mongolian, it is Zungar, it is left hand. This is how the word Zungar was originated. Kalmyks, Oirats, are one and the same name. The word Oirat is also translated as Union of Four. In 1635, the son of the Oirat ruler, Harahula Batur, united the scattered Oirat tribes and declared himself Hong Taiji, the title of supreme ruler. Later, he even received the title of Han from the Dalai Lama for the help to Tibetans. In 1640, he arranged a large Kuril Tai in Tarbagatai. Representatives of all Oirat families who lived in the territory of Jungaria northern Mongolia, the Volga region, the northern Caucasus, Central Asia, western Mongolia, the Ural region, Siberia, eastern Turkestan and Tibet took part in this Kurultai. The main goal of this meeting was the establishment of the Oirat Union, the empire of Khanats and principalities. During this convention, an important document was adopted, Ik Sajin Bichig, the Great Step Code, which regulated the internal legal relations between the Oirats and foreign policy. If someone attacks our state, commits murders, loots and plunders a large number of people and settlements, then the Mongols and Oirat should unite and take attackers' possessions, give half to the fallen people, and the second half divide between the Oirat and Mongol princes. In case of an enemy attack on Mongolia or Oiratia, to inform these two states, if one of the princes of the frontier districts does not oppose the enemy, he should be punished in order to give 100 shells. 100 camels, and 1,000 horses. If the prince does not have such wealth, then he should give 10 shells, 10 camels, and 100 horses. Thus, Hong Taiji Batur was given the title Erdini, which means jewel, 
managed to establish a powerful centralized state based on the laws of strict military discipline. In result of the campaigns on the territory of the Manchurian Qing Empire, Russia, states and tribal alliances of Central Asia, the territory of the Jungar Khanat widened significantly. Previously, the Kazakhs managed to dominate in the eastern part of Central Asia due to internal strives of the Oirats, and the balance of strength was changed soon. The territory of the northern part of Kazakhstan, which was conquered by the Khan Yassim, and the result of the collapse of the Siberian state, fell under the control of the Jungars, Kalmyks, and Nogais. The border between the Kazakh Khanat and the Moscow state disappeared, and the main territory of the Kazakhs was the Karatau Sirdaria Aral Sea regions. What was happening during this period in the Kazakh Khanat? How could the rulers of the Kazakhs withstand the growing threat from the east? By the middle of the 17th century, the Kazakhs were no longer the powerful centralized union of tribes like it was under the rule of Kasim Khan or Haknazar Khan. The Kazakh Khanat was in a political crisis caused by the struggle for power. There was a constant struggle between the Chinggisid Khans, direct blood descendants of Genghis Khan, and the local authorities of the Middle Estate. The Chinggisid Khans believed that they had the right to keep their subordinates to levy taxes and to make subordinates to participate in their raids and campaigns. But freedom-loving tribes, people led by these bees, did not want this. Who wants to obey? Who wants to pay tax? That's why there was no united powerful state. The Kazakh Khans could not manage to collect taxes from the Kazakhs. Even if the Kazakh Khans came to power, they did not have a powerful resource so that they could buy weapons, hire an army, build cities, hire some scientists and poets. They were the same as the majority of the nomads. Well, they had more cattle, and that's it. And in the result of such conditions, the Sultan Jangir decided to form an alliance with Jalantos and confront the Oirats. This event was fixed on only one document in the reply of Tobolsk generals Kurakin and Gagarin to Siberia. There was a story of ambassadors, Cossack Grishka Ilyin and Yurt's servant, Tatar Kuchim Berdi Kuchev, who visited the court of Hong Taiji Yerdini. Cossack Grishka Ilyin and Yurt's servant, Tartar Kuchim Birdi Kuchev, told us that they heard from Hong Taiji, how Hong Taiji arranged campaign to the lands of the Sultan Jangir and Jalantos Batir. Altai, Khirgiz, and Tumiens with about 10,000 were under the flag of Hong Taiji. And when Jangir Sultan heard about this campaign, he decided to confront Hong Taiji with the troops that consisted of 600 soldiers. But how was Jangir going to confront the Oirat army, having only a small detachment? How did he plan to hold on until the arrival of the forces of Jalantos Bahadur? The young sultan had a trick that allowed him to buy some time. He sent his detachment to the mountainous terrain so that the enemy army could not surround the detachment. Before that, he had managed to get 300 guns for his soldiers. After reaching the place of the future battle, Jangir ordered his people to dig deep ditches and to put blocks. And Jangir Sultan's people dug moats, put blocks, and 300 soldiers with guns sat in those moats. Jangir took another 300 soldiers and spread out on the cliffs. As Hong Taiji's army got close to the moats, Jangir Sultan's soldiers attacked them. And from the other side, Jangir attacked with the rest of his soldiers. 
and thus Jahangir Sultan managed to defeat the army of 10,000. The Batirs that followed Jahangir played the decisive role in the victory against the Oirats. The image of two friends, Argintai and Karasai, became the history thanks to this battle. Indeed, they became the first representatives of a peculiar caste of soldiers. The so-called Institute of Batirs began its formation after these two Batirs. The Institute of Batirs was formed as an independent phenomenon in the Kazakh Khanat to the beginning and middle of the 18th century, when Batirs really shown their skills in that battle when they began to liberate the territory of Sariarka and Zhitisu from the Jungarian invaders. There were a lot of Chinggisids, Hans and Sultans, and each of them imagined himself as a future Han. It was difficult for one person to become an authoritative Han who could lead others. Later, by the middle of the 18th century, Ablai Khan managed this. And the role of consolidation of the Kazakh people was taken by Batirs, Kaban by Batir, Ogun by Batir, Aktam Birdi, and many others. In the 17th century, the process of forming the Institute of Batirs just began. In general, caste of Batirs was like the class of the Samurais in Japan, like the Janissaries in Turkey, like the Slacha in Poland, like the Mamluks in the Arabic world. They were soldiers who were freed from all other deeds, cattle grazing and so on. The only thing they must do was fight. This caste was needed when the invaders began arranging campaigns on the territories of the Kazakh lands. Using the peculiarities of the mountainous terrain wisely, Jangir Sultan managed to organize the ambush and defeated the Oirats in crossfire. The Kazakhs used guns for the first time. And this was a completely unexpected case for the enemy. The mounted unit led by Batiris had only to beat the enemy. Thus, Jangir managed to buy time and hold on until the arrival of Jalantos. In the result of the battle, the Oirats were defeated. But the trouble was that later, the Kazakhs did not adopt this new method of warfare, in contrast to their enemies, who managed to draw the right conclusions. After the usage of guns by the Kazakhs, the Jungars understood the power that guns can have if to use in warfare. Not just when one of ten shoots, or one of a hundred shoots, but in an organized system. It is a powerful weapon, and they began to make every effort to get guns for their army. The Jungars had opportunities to arm their soldiers with guns. This is the reason why guns are never found on images and sculptures of Kazakh Batirs. Kazakhs did not progress in military terms, and therefore they often were defeated. But this was after the battle near the river Orbulak. In this battle, the Oirats were completely defeated despite their superiority in numbers. However, scientists have certain doubts about the superiority. Such alignment of forces seems too questionable. I think it's just... I think that it is a wrong translation, that there was a misunderstanding. After all, these Russian ambassadors met with prisoners only. The number of army has always been a military secret. They considered Russia as an enemy. Why should they talk about the number of soldiers in the army? It was a secret. I think that any Jungarian kept the number of soldiers a secret. It's just a conclusion that they made from the conversations with the captives. 
and the captives couldn't know the exact number, or maybe they were wrong. There were five Tumens, five Taishas, generals were in this campaign. Each Taisha took part in this campaign with his Tumen. Tumen is an army unit of 10,000 soldiers. But it was in the 13th century in the times of Genghis Khan. By the 17th century, word Tumen was used to a detachment with two or 3,000 soldiers. I think there were five Tumens. And five Tumens were incorrectly translated as five Tumens with 10,000 soldiers each. However, the prisoners could not be mistaken in the number of their troops. Consequently, if we assume that they really could not know the number of the enemy troops, then the version of detachment with 600 soldiers is a very real justification. In those days, moving towards the enemy with only 600 soldiers, even with half-armed soldiers, would be suicide. And the heroism of Zhang Gir's soldiers is indisputable. It was a feat which is remembered in history. Another subject of disputes among scientists connected with the Orbulak battle is the location of the battle. Which ridges could be called Kazakh Thermopylae? There are two versions. In April, Jangir left Turkestan through the Karatau Mountains, past the rivers Talas and Chu, and then arrived in Zhitisu. Batur, in his turn, wanted to deceive Jangir. He crossed the mountains of Altin Emel to the mountains of Koyamdi. This is the former Jarken district. These mountains are located between Jarken district and the Kogali district, the mountains of Altin Emel and Koyandi. Between these mountains, there is a place with about two kilometers area in size. This place is surrounded by mountains from the east and south sides. According to other sources, the region of Simireche, Shitisu, was already captured by the Oirats to the time when the described events happened and the battle took place further west on the border of the Kazakh and Kyrgyz nomadic camps. In any way, knowing geography, it's hard to imagine that the battle could have been in the Jungarian Alatau, in the place where it is believed that this battle took place. It is natural boundary, Bil Jailao, which is located between the Balkhash and Ili valleys. By that time of the battle, the whole eastern part of Zhitisu was in Jungarian possession. Following this reasoning, the battle took place somewhere on the border of the Kazakh, Bukhara Khanats and the Kyrgyz lands. That is, it's somewhere here, a little further east from Almaty, maybe in the Chu Valley or maybe near the Chu Valley. The exact place of this battle was not recorded in written sources. It is the subject of controversy, speculation and assumption. Having defeated formidable Erdini Batur, Jangir has shown who should sit on the Kazakh throne. Moreover, for the courage and ingenuity shown in this battle, the Kazakhs gave him nickname Salkam, which means impressive in translation from Kazakh. Jangir devoted his whole life to fighting against the Oirats and died in battle, as befits a true warrior. He was buried in Turkestan. With regard to the friends Argintai and Karasai, they supported and were always near the young Han, becoming his closest assistants. They fought shoulder to shoulder against the Jungars in the Battle of 1664 for the last time. They fought together until the day they died. They were even buried close to each other in the town called Kulishinbai Tobe, located on the territory of the modern Akmala region. 
and only on the map of Almaty the names of these two folk heroes are not mentioned, one after another. 